A very good morning to Ms. Sun Xieling, Minister of State, Ministry of Education, and Ministry for Social and Family Development. Esteemed partners, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Association of Women in Construction Singapore's event in celebration of International Women's Day. First and foremost, I would like to thank MOS Ms. Sun Xieling for making time for us to grace our event. We are very honored to have you open the event for us. In fact, you are first minister to grace our event since our formation about one and a half years ago. And as we all know, all such activities came to a near standstill for about a year with the pandemic situation. However, after our first event before the lockdown, we still managed to have four online activities. This is thanks to our strong support from our partners from the industry. For those who are new to AWICS, which stands for the Association of Women in Construction Singapore, it is set up to bring together the different areas within the built environment. Instead of operating in silos, AWICS caters to the whole built environment food chain. Again, I would like to stress that AWICS membership is open to both male and female. It is open to anyone who is working within the built environment industry. We have 30 corporate members and more than 30 individual members, consisting of developers, consultants, contractors, suppliers, and individuals, both from the private and public sector. AWIC's mission is to retain women in the built environment workforce, mentoring young adults and integrating people in the different sectors of the built environment industry. The built environment sector is undergoing changes. It is timely to look at the roles of women in this industry. This event gives the opportunity to both men and women in the built environment to share about the challenges that women face, be it perceived or real. And in the process, we hope to discover the opportunities women can further develop in. When we talk about women, we are inclined to dwell more on mothers. I will urge that you also not forget singles especially the ones in mid-career, who often end up being the caregivers of elderly folks over the rest of the siblings with families. They too face many challenges and quite different from that of mothers. On the business platform, we should work towards an even more inclusive Singapore, where the SMEs are given equal opportunities instead of the big corporation, and employers and employees have a fair playing ground. Singapore is blessed that we have equal opportunities for both men and women, much earlier than many other countries. We have to constantly remind ourselves that whatever we do and whatever policies we make, we should be inclusive. In the modern society, there's little difference between men and women. While each has its strengths and weaknesses, technologies have leveled the playing field significantly. The construction industry is no longer one that needs brawn, rather it needs us to be skilled, motivated, articulate, resourceful and transform, in short, smart, which is the tagline for AWICS. 
Let us be smart and inclusive together to help transform the built environment industry. On this note, let me thank our sponsors, ADAS, Lam Chang, and Savannah Jurong for supporting this event. And of course, all of you for committing your time to attend this event. We will have a photo taking session after the opening address by MOS Ms. Sun Shetling. MOS Ms. Sun Shetling, please accept our appreciation for coming. MOS Ms. Sun Shetling will now give her opening address. Over to you. Thank you, Emily. Those are very kind, inspiring words on a bright Monday morning. I'm delighted to be here amongst friends of the sector, colleagues. I had previously been at the Ministry of National Development. We had put a huge focus on the built environment. And in fact, it was in one of those sessions that I met uh, Emily and she had told me about this association um, that she is uh, she's founded together and managing together with uh, many other uh, women who are interested in the course. And I'm deli delighted to be here this morning to join you. Um, for this event, because, and I thank all our partners and also the sponsors who are with us here on the call today for your continued support for the sector. So, Ms. Emily Tan, President of Association of Women in Construction, Singapore, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to join all of you today at our week's International Women's Day event. Now, Singaporean women have made tremendous progress throughout the years with the support of the society, each and every indiv individual, our fathers, our husbands, brothers, colleagues, friends. Women have progressed in partnership with other women and with the men in our society, and of course, with the support of the government. And our legislation and policies continue to protect and uplift women, it has also evolved over the years in tandem with societal norms. I always joke with people that we may not know this, but the Women's Charter celebrates its 60th anniversary this year, 60 years since the Women's Charter was passed in the Legislative Assembly of Singapore in 1961. And back then, what were women trying to battle? We were trying to institutionalize monogamous marriage. How, how far we have come as a society. And if we look at various indicators, women have done well in Singapore. The rates at 96%. Our labor force employment for women, more than 70%. For graduates from our IHLs, 50% are women. So these are all very positive indicators. But it also means that we have to continue to work harder at it because I think we all share a collective vision uh, as well as aspiration that our women continue to do well in our society. And that is why the government launched the Conversations on Singapore Women's Development in September last year. It aims to review the issues faced by Singaporean women and explore how we can collectively co-create and co-implement solutions to further progress women in Singapore. The feedback and ideas shared at the conversations will be consolidated into a white paper, which will be debated in Parliament in the second half of this year. The Ministry of Social and Family Development, where I am right now, um, has also dedicated the year of 2021 in celebration of, of SG Women, because there are so many multifaceted roles that women play. Just now, Emily had mentioned there are single women, career women, women in all sorts of industries, women performing all sorts of roles. And we want to celebrate each and every woman in our society, not just those who, who have been successful, you know, in a typical sense of the word, but the everyday woman as well, because the woman has taken on so many responsibilities to better family, better society in Singapore. So we invite Singaporeans to celebrate the achievements of our Singaporean women and their continued respect, uh, continued progress. And we hope that respect continues to be the cornerstone of the relationship between men and women. We also want to celebrate the men who have helped to change mindsets and also who have played an active role in supporting and uplifting women in Singapore. Now, women are an integral part of our workforce. You would 
know this all too well. We see many women leaders in diverse sectors of society. The women who have come together to put together our week, I think is testament to that as well. Many, many women leaders in our society. But as you would know well as well, not many women choose to work in the built environment industry. 29% of the construction industry's resident workforce are women. Uh, but uh, just to give ourselves a little bit of consolation, uh, we are not the worst hit sector. Just um, last week, I was at the semiconductor industry event. For them, it was 10 to 25%. So at 29%, you are actually better. Lah. <laughs> but still, uh, nothing for us to uh, rest on our laurels on. I think we have to continue to work hard at this. Um, but nonetheless, there is growing interest in the construction sector among the women. The number of female residents employed in the sector has grown from 17,000 in 2001 to 28,300 in 2020. And just now, Emily also mentioned, the sector is undergoing transformation. We have talked about the green building movement, the increasing adoption of smart technology. So Emily used the word, no longer about brawn, huh? It's about being smart also. And I think where women are concerned, I think that one we can be very confident about that. <laughs> so there will be greater need for diverse talent and more opportunities for entrance, huh? regardless um, of your sex, regardless of your gender. But we understand that the built environment sector has particular challenges, huh? be it harsh site conditions or working in a predominantly male workplace. So to this end, the BCA has worked on initiatives and policies to improve the working environment for men and women. One such initiative is the development of good HR practices within firms. Some built environment firms, including consultants, contractors, developers, and facility management firms, are working closely with the BCA to improve their HR practices. I'm very sure many of our partners and corporates who are online with us here today are also doing that as well. So some examples, DP Architects, Far East Organization, Team Build Construction Group, and CBM Solutions have provided more flexible workplace arrangements and childcare or elder care special arrangements for their employees. And there are also leadership and career development initiatives, such as the I Build SG Leadership Engagement and Development, the LEAD Framework, as well as the Skills Framework for the Build Environment. BCA's initiatives in the built environment sector also complement the broader efforts undertaken to support women across all industries. This is something that the Ministry of Manpower is very focused on. So to ensure fair employment practices at workplaces, uh, TAFET and MOM have been actively promoting fair employment practices through media messages, employer engagement and resources such as toolkits. Uh, we also hope that you can help us publicize this message. So all employers are expected to abide by the principles of fair and marriage-based employment practices outlined in the tripartite guidelines on fair employment practices. But this is not just about publishing guidelines. It is also about the sector accepting them and knowing about them and also employees knowing about their, their rights um, and if they should meet uh, instances where they feel that they have not been fairly treated, where they should go to. And this is also where um, associations such as our week will play a very, very important role to help us spread this message, to help our female uh, workers uh, in society should they encounter issues. The government as a whole has also enhanced measures to better support women in balancing work and family. Um, for myself, for instance, and the Ministry of Social and Family Development, I have made it a key, so what, my key responsibility to make sure that there is a good ecosystem of support around childcare, around infant care, um, so, because these are all important uh, caregiving aspects that women care about. We want to make sure that the government stands behind them, gives them the infrastructure to support them, and also elder care services. Uh, we also support the provision of flexible workplace arrangements. The silver lining in the cloud where COVID-19 is concerned is that it has turbocharged flexible workplace arrangements. For a long time, government had been trying to promote it. We were not making really huge exponential uh, moves we were not, I think the industry acceptance of it was somewhat difficult. But with COVID-19 and all these work from home arrangements, it seems that fle flexible workplace arrangements has now become quite the norm. And we hope that it will continue even after COVID-19 has passed. And we also promote shared parental responsibility 
Um, that's when a man again comes to the picture. Um, we have increased parental leave, um, paternity leave, shared parental leave, and we hope more fathers uh, will take it up. Because when you do that, when you encourage bonding between father and child, um, you also, I think, somewhat lessen the caregiving burden on women. And, you know, in and of itself, I'm sure our fathers enjoy and treasure the time they spend with their children. So supporting SG Women, Singaporean Women's Progress, is a whole of society effort that requires a huge societal mindset shift in traditional gender roles. We made that huge move in 1961 with the Women's Charter with monogamy, you know, eliminating, um, uh, institutionalizing monogamous marriages. Now the next big step for us is to remove whatever stereotypes we have in our minds about men and women, to give women fair opportunities education, work, career choices. And the many women among us are already debunking gender stereotypes by taking up the challenge of working in the built environment industry, but we can always continue to do more. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for supporting women in the built environment sector, and also to encourage you to join us in a movement to celebrate the roles of women in Singapore society. Going forward, we hope to work even more closely with different stakeholders, including organizations like AWIC and individuals like yourself to come together to create and implement solutions. Last but not least, I would like to thank AWIC and your partners, Sabana Jurong Consultants, ADAS, and Lam Chang Building Contractors for organizing this meaningful event. Thank you very much and I wish you a lovely morning. Thank you. Back to you, Emily. Yeah. Thank you, MOS Nissan, for sharing and the very encouraging message. Oh, um, before we move on to the next activity, we'll have a short photo taking session now with MOS, Ms. Sun. Yeah, so all please put on your best smile and uh, smile and look at your cameras continuously because we have a few pages, so we need to take uh, a few shots. Yeah, Wang Yu, please take the pictures. Okay, all done, thank you. Okay, so um, we are now, I'll now pass the time over to Matthew, who is an engineer and uh, for the next activity, he will bring us through a Mentimeter activity. Over to you, Matthew. Thanks, Emily. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Matthew and I'll be taking us through this very short and quick uh, warm-up activity, as I like to call it, uh, before our breakout room discussion. So can I call upon my colleague, Alvina? She will be flashing a QR code. Uh, kindly take out your mobile phone devices and scan the QR code. It will lead you to a uh, questionnaire. Yeah. And the question will be, what are some of the challenges that women face in the built environment industry? So take a while to think of your responses and um, just fill it in. Yeah. And Alvina, maybe shortly you can switch over to the word cloud. Yeah, we give everyone maybe 10 more seconds to scan the QR code. And yeah, Elvina, I think let's go over to the word cloud. So as your responses come in, uh, we'll see them being generated on the word cloud. All right, so yeah, keep them coming. Uh, the responses, how a word cloud works is that the responses that are the most uh, popular, the most keyed in, will, will appear bigger and bigger. So, so far it seems that juggling responsibilities of, uh, oh, it changed. Stereotype is the, is the main word now. Work-life balance. So I will assume that uh, it's juggling between being a mom and, and having to perform at work. Okay, so it's very interesting. Yeah, there are many responses and let's keep them coming in. Yeah, so work-life balance seems to be uh, the answer that is lingering. And whether or not um, everyone here agrees, no, this is actually one of the questions that will be discussed in the breakout rooms. So maybe the facilitator for this room can take note. Okay, so time work-life balance stereotype. 
um, these are what like most of you all have been do feel like, are the main challenges that women face in the in our industry. Okay, thank you all for your participation. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, quick warm up activity. And now before we move to breakout rooms, uh, let me just uh, take another minute to, to share some guidelines uh, with all of you all regarding some etiquette uh, in the Zoom room, in the breakout room rather. Okay, so please note that you'll be automatically assigned to your breakout rooms uh, once we open the rooms. And uh, kindly also note that some of the, uh, we may share certain selected codes uh, with MSF, Ministry of Social and Family Development, uh, and with the public. Uh, but please be rest assured that we will not attribute you know, your comments to you. Uh, everything will be kept within the room yeah, in terms of um, your identity. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, a few more guidelines. Uh, kindly remember this is a discussion and not a Q&A. So do come prepared to discuss, you know, share your opinion and hear the opinions of others. Please observe uh, Chatham House rules. So you are free to use the information you receive after this session is over. But please make sure to not reveal the identity of who said those things. Yeah, let's also not uh, dominate the discussion or or let's not only discuss about one issue, right? let's try and cover as many issues as possible. And whenever you want to uh, contribute to the discussion, uh, please use the raise hand function in the breakout room. So let's try and keep this uh, safe environment for everyone. Uh, free yourself from distractions now. Uh, quite important, please do not record this session uh, so as not to violate the privacy of others. And also remember to uh, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. We we'll strongly encourage you all to switch on your videos so that everyone can see each other's faces. And lastly, um, please share your views respectfully and listen with an open mind. I think that would be the most important uh, key to having a constructive and uh, enjoyable discussion. Yeah, so with that, I think we're ready to go to our breakout rooms. Uh, your facilitators and note takers, uh, their names are reflected on the right. Um, we have tried our best to uh, assign you to the breakout room of your preference. Uh, we seek your understanding if you did not get your number one choice. Okay, we can split the breakout rooms when, when we're ready. Thank you for coming back to the main room. Yes. I trust that you had a meaningful discussion in your respective breakout rooms. Um, yeah, that's good. I see people nodding their heads. Right, good, good. Uh, just, yes, there's some... Um, can we just have to, to catch up on time? Um, I shall not waste any more. Can we have the sharing from the first breakout room, please? I hope that you have already assigned your people to. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Marilyn. Yeah, so I'll be sharing some of the discussion points from breakout room one. So the for breakout room one, our discussion topic is what is the role of women in uh, construction? Yeah, so in addition to talking about that, actually we also talk about a lot of the challenges that women face. Lah. So on the role of women in construction, I think what we established is that uh, it's similar to men also, despite the gender, what we are doing is the same, the job scope and stuff. So, uh, for women uh, in the industry, we will have to support uh, other women as well because it's not uh, easy compared that we are the minority in this built industry. So, one of the things we highlighted is that uh, creating more opportunities for women at the entry level and also we observed that uh, throughout the career progression that uh, women are also taking up managerial roles. Yeah, there's no uh, like male predominantly taking up the manager role uh, in the current situation as compared to the past. So more people are 
open to opportunity, uh, providing opportunities to women in the built industry. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. So uh, we move on to the next room, second room. Uh, who would that be? Okay, uh, I'll take you through the uh, room two discussion. La. Okay, so for room two, right, uh, we were discussing on what are the challenges faced uh, by women in the built industry, right? So uh, some pointers highlighted, some common points la, would be on more on the uh, gender bias side or the stereotyping side because uh, some of the participants actually shared that, you know, as much as the ladies are willing to go to site or willing to be in this environment, but the employers themselves or the supervisors or the bosses actually feel otherwise. So it makes it very uh, hard that, you know, one side is so willing, but the other side is so unwilling to allow that flexibility for women to uh, join this industry. Yeah, so that's one. So we actually feel that uh, employers should be the ones spearheading this change because if employers don't uh, actually embrace this change in the mindset to have women in the industry so that to add uh, diversity, then it's very hard for the employees themselves to actually make much changes. La. And also for uh, this, all these values to be very, uh, to hold, for the companies to hold dearly to these values so that we can have more diversity in the industry. So for work-life balance side, uh, actually, I think it will, we didn't really talk about having work-life balance, but I think since no one brought it up as a big concern, right? So I thought it was still pretty okay for work-life balance side. And then uh, for gender biasness, I think also there's not too much gender bias because some of them actually said they are very uh, lucky or fortunate to have a company that actually don't really, you know, like uh, stereotype women or being very biased towards women. And actually some of them actually benefited by being a lady in the industry. They are having more special kind of treatment la, to take care of them, you know, make sure they are not too... Uh, Bully in a sense. Yeah, so I think these are some of the challenges faced. Lah. All right. Thank you, Leah. So what about room three? Okay, maybe I'll help to summarize uh, the very interesting discussions. We have a lot of good points from the male counterparts <laughs> in this. Um, so basically, I think the, one of the key ideas raised was to come up with some guidelines on physical space provisions for childcare support facilities at uh, workplaces, be they at construction sites, office buildings, and these are in addition uh, to the ones that we see in shopping malls, like the nursing rooms, um, uh, the, the male and female toilets equipped with uh, uh, facilities uh, to support mothers. And um, also in the physical buildings, perhaps there can be some waiting area for the parents to pick up or drop off uh, the children in a safe uh, manner. So that's about the physical space provisions. Uh, perhaps there can be some guidelines instituted across or site, uh, construction sites, office buildings alike. The other point raised is about um, having more flexible, uh, more uh, flexible online classes, forums, at the convenience of professionals, because most of us would have to work and their commitment are very, uh, their commitment during the daytime. And it's only during the nighttime that perhaps one can spend time to assess to the courses, to upgrade and develop ourselves. So that should be, uh, one of the key considerations in the design uh, of the courses to make it more accessible to the uh, working adults. And an interesting point is also to see how uh, we can encourage the children at a very young age to have interest in this built environment, like maybe uh, Lego building or something that's, that, that can be some programming that can be um, uh, activated to uh, bring out their creative juices or to draw their attention to the possibilities of built environment at a very young age. So that's got to do with uh, training and uh, courses for people of all ages. And last but not least, I think uh, one other key point raised is the uh, sharing of best practices. Um, uh, because I guess um, there are many um, good projects and experiences that can be drawn from the teammates. Um, so it's good that the team can come together, reflect upon the projects, go through the different stages of construction works, uh, so that this kind of sharing can also empower and develop the skills of women in the built environment. So in short, a community of practice would be uh, very helpful 
and hopefully this can also be instituted across uh, the various uh, companies. And I think ADAS also shared some of the HR practices that they have in place um, to, to ensure equal opportunities in terms of training and development for, for their working professionals. Yeah, I think that's, that's all uh, we have captured. If I miss anything, can my teammate please chip in? Otherwise, uh, that are the key points that were the key points uh, raised. Thank you, Faini. I can see that ADAS is a very family oriented. <laughs> having I saw Yen Yen having a uh, kids in the background as well. Yeah, that, one of my colleagues. Uh, it's school holidays this week, so her her two boys. Uh, we gave some toys from my two boys who've grown up, and I passed it on to my colleagues so they could get used to those toys. So they they wanted to come in and say thank you personally to me. So I said, of course. All right, that's good. Yeah. All right, well, um, well, we have come to the end of the uh, event. Uh, so that I think that the topics you discussed today are really important to ensure the continued progress of our women in the workplace. And this will become increasingly important in the built environment sector's transformation journey. So um, for progress to happen, we need meaningful conversation among the industry on this important issue, not just dialogues between the government and the industry. So I hope that more men will step out to support the women in the industry and consider what you can do to uplift and empower women in the built environment industry. So for a start, those who are not members of the Association of Women in Construction Singapore yet, our activities are open to both men and women and definitely the membership too. So I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's event and all of you for sharing your experiences and ideas. I would also like to thank the facilitators, Alvin, Vima, and Faini, the note takers, Dinesh, Liang, and then Stella, the room assistants, Alvina, Matthew, and Wang Yi, and our event organizer, Elaine. So finally, I'd like to again express my utmost gratitude to our sponsors, Adas, Lam Chang, and Sabana Jurong for sponsoring this event. So we have prepared a token of appreciation as shown here, and we'll present to you in person after this event. So thank you everyone for coming and staying to the end. I hope to see you at our next event. Have a good day ahead.